I can easily sympathize with people that are outraged by the Super Bowl commercials and the Cheerio commercials. I can understand how the NFL manages to continue to pass itself off as a non-profit organization, despite the fact that it has none of the merits of a non-profit organization. And that it's just a ridiculous waste of resources because all those things are the makings of a modern nonprofit organization. I've seen most nonprofit businesses and they're all trash. They really are. They come in with a fake agenda and they're just ways for people to get paid to do absolutely nothing. Some hunky dory, feel good left wing stuff. And we get that with stuff like the Super Bowl commercials. The one people were originally freaking out about was the one with the return of the ugly mulatto baby, the one that kind of looks like this song that says Two Scoops that has that shit from Razor Brand. That mulatto kid with the black dad and the white mom. Well, they're back, and the dad is basically explaining to the kid with her with some Cheerios that okay, the first Cheerio is you. Then there's a second one that's me. And then the third one's your white ass mom. You can see over there that she's white, and that I'm black, uh, and that you're kind of a mix. And the fourth one, well, we're going to have a kid. So, yeah, I just impregnated that white girl. And then she just takes another one to be cutie and then says, okay, but we're getting a dog, too. So that's five right there. And the reason it's so strange is that if it's all white people, then it's a boring, sappy, 50s, milk, toast, hunky-dory kind of white America corporate commercial I mean it features somewhat of a nuclear family things of that nature but the only way for you to actually like something corny like that is if it features a bunch of miscegenation and things of that nature and then in the end it features a condescending liberal talking point of love with a cheerio representing a period and a yellow classic Cheerios backdrop because liberals love saying that it's all about love really really it's not Lo equal love even if that's racial or same sex equal love even though obviously liberals for them hate is stronger than love no matter what they say discrimination no that's Actually setting standards on people, actually functioning and acting as a real civilization, as a real society, oh no, that's hate. Oh, but if you disagree with gay marriage, then that must mean you like dick. If you disagree with mixed marriages or miscegenation, as an off-the-cuff thing that we should be celebrating, then you must be scared that a black guy is going to take your girl because they have bigger dicks than you. And then we get to the Cheerio one where, not the Cheerio one, the Coca-Cola one, where they're singing the American National Anthem, the Star Spangled Banner, but with, in multiple languages, some Arab, some poverty Spanish I believe maybe Portuguese and, and some Semitic ass languages with camera shots of various brown people from nasty ass second world countries and it you know how on the last few notes of the Star Spangled Banner people tend to improvise and embellish the last few notes the last few notes had like the coca-cola standard jingle I really don't find these commercials that offensive and controversial because I know that most people 
go to the Super Bowl, not because they're sports fans and they actually like the product. God forbid, you actually really care about sports, not just the politicking and the bandwagoning and all this stuff. The plays, the actual energy and excitement. No, it's the commercials, the half-time performances, and the fact that it's really scheduled as a big deal with a lot of money being thrown into the production value, which is great. I love the sweeping and rotating camera shots. Those were all attractive, especially when they were in their starting position, and then they started running, and it, the camera rotated so you can see it. It almost looked like an NFL game on a PlayStation 7. It was really beautiful, but... This sucks. I'm sorry, but this is shit. It kind of reminds me of what WrestleMania in WWE has become, where it draws the most, most people watch it, even though it's not on free TV, it's a pay-per-view, it outsells all pay-per-views ten times over, like, WrestleMania gets, like, millions, and people watch stuff like the Divas match with Snooki, or the other Divas match with Marina. Maria Menounos, Floyd May Mayweather with the big show, they were fighting each other and stuff like that. Floyd basically squashed the big show. Like he squashes everyone else. Cause that guy's undefeated since the 90s. That's worse than The Undertaker. Yeah. You got all these matches that are basically there to support the casual fans. I really don't care about a CM Punk, uh, a Jericho, or any of these other guys. They're just like, hey, they show us once every year. It's supposed to be a big deal. Let's see it. And these crappy ass musical numbers with P. Diddy, Machine Gun Kelly, with Ashanti. It's really become an event that's not necessarily for wrestling fans and Vince knew this, that's why the first Mania's main event had Mr. T in it and the second one had a main event with Mr. T in it because he was trying to make it into the Super Bowl for wrestling and to do that you have to appeal to the casual fan of pop culture references and nothing but pop culture references minimal fan service to the actual wrestling fans. And that's kind of what I'm getting from the Super Bowl. That's why, to be honest, I do prefer the NBA because with the NBA, yeah, the NBA is full of commercial sellouts. You got them being endorsed by rappers, you got the shitty movies like Space Jam that people actually think that's top-notch quality. You got Jordans, got Gatorade, got shitty video games like 2K. All this commercial stuff. But all integrates and comes back to the product. People are really hooked in to basketball. And if there are bandwagoners it's not because of a special television event. The closest thing they have to that is All Stars, but that's a two day thing. No, they're really hooked into it because of their news feeds at best. Because if you're going to watch the main events, like the finals and the playoffs, those are multiple day things. You can't just watch it or watch it to be celebratory. You really have to be a bit of a fanboy at some point, and it gets you hooked on. I mean, the first WrestleMania I ever saw, the first WrestleMania I ever looked forward to, actually made me want to quit watching wrestling ASAP. But then I saw that Cena versus Rock was announced. I started looking forward to everything in the future, 
and now I'm hooked for life, I guess. Or at least what I think, what, as of now, is hooked for life. Going back to the commercials, uh, that's kind of what I see. I don't see any passion for, let's say, miscegenation. These people aren't happy that the black guy is fucking the white girl. At least in rap videos, you know that the white hoochie's in the back, that you can tell they don't want to be there, and they're just paid models with no future once they turn 24. They're just doing this because they're hired for it. And the rappers are just basically there to flex, and they really don't want to do this shit. They just want to smoke weed all day. But you can at least they feign more passion in this nasty ass Cheerios commercial than these nasty ass poverty kids and whack ass singing for the American national anthem and the Super Bowl. This is all. They can't even fake it. It's so bland and corporate. And when people diss corporate America, they usually go after white America. Especially if they themselves are white. Because the first thing when you're a teen you want to go up against the corporation, but you settle on the white thing. These guys settle so hard on fighting white America and becoming corporate America that they get what they want. This is what they want. They got it. And Jews are kind of an interesting people because they're not connected to their ground, but they're very strongly connected to each other. A Jew is more prideful than a white, than an Asian and a black. These are people that are more proud of their identity. And it's getting worse because we're not checking them. Before they would check each other, now they're just, just checking the world. We're becoming the inverse of that. The radical inverse. We're so connected to where we come from, but we're not connected to each other at all. So it's like, fuck yeah, America, but what is an American? Fuck yeah, New York City, but what is New York? Fuck yeah, Washington Heights, but what is Washington Heights? Fuck yeah, Haven Avenue, but what is Haven Avenue? Fuck yeah, David Fabre, but what is David Fabre? We get so much ego, yet we don't even think about who we are as people. There's no super ego, there's no balancing principle. And we're starting to see the consequences of that. In the fact that we have all these moral causes, yet we have such fucked up psychologies in the end that we're becoming neurotic. It's not making us better, it's not resolving our inner conflicts, it's just creating more scars. And as emo as that sounds, it's only going to get more emo if we continue to parade all these nasty ass causes. Hopefully this means that people are done with the poop dick for a while and they're going to go back to whining about the race issue. And not even like black people, just multiculturalism, Judaification or Judaification in reverse, which is, as someone like Sebastian Ronin might say, Merkinization. But I want to diss America. America is the shit. And our faults are also something that we can accredit to our strengths. That we can identify based on strange things. Anyways, Mr. Wonka 7, and fuck all of you, you can all go to hell.